Hey, what's up? Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. In this one, we're going to review these lovely paints from a brand called Aquarius. These are made by a Polish painter called Roman Zmal. I hope I'm not mispronouncing his name, but I'm going to put all the links in the description box below and all the details. I was sent these for review a while back, several months back, and I haven't had the chance to review them, so we're going to do that now. And I have a really cool exercise that will allow these to shine. And I think you're going to really enjoy just looking at me paint. So let's take it to the table, get started. So here's an up close look of what these look like. You can see here uh, the name of the artist, Roman. Um, this is the back side and the names of all of the paints are also here. Um, I just wanted to show them to you up close before we even uh, get to the review stage. Uh, let me show you the pans from up close, these look really nice and I'm really looking forward to uh, trying them out. So what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna spread these out and tape them to some kind of a surface and then we'll be able to test them out. But just let's go over them. This is Aquarius Red. Uh, this is Ultramarine Light. This is Nickel Azo Yellow. All of the paints I love actually. Uh, this is uh, Mineral Violet, interesting. Uh, this is... Uh, Mummy Transparent Red. That's really interesting. We'll have to check this one out. Uh, this one is Olive Green Light. So very nice colors, very interesting. I think uh, these could work really well. Now let's uh, set them up and get started. So first we'll get started with the obligatory swatches because I do want to show you, one, uh, what these look like clean and two, just so you have some of the information and the names in front of you. Uh, I actually want to give you an up-close look of the palette because this is really interesting. First, the red was very soft. So, um, and they had these covers on, the moment I removed them, it just stuck to it and it, it kind of went like cheese, uh, which is good actually, because I love softer reds. Uh, they tend to look really, um, really well for me, at least in my personal opinion. This is pigment red 214. Now, another interesting observation is this is the nickel azo yellow. So check it out. It's really uh, strange in, in its darkness. And this is a good thing because it means it can probably achieve that dark of a value. You can usually judge how dark a paint can get uh, based on what they look like in the swatch. So what I'm going to do now, sorry, not in the swatch, but in the pen rather, uh, is just start swatching these. So let's grab a bit of that red. Uh, I did clean my palette. Hopefully that'll be enough. Um, and uh, I'll just show you. Let me zoom in, in fact, on the top row, top area, so that you better see uh, what the paint looks like. But here we go. Um, it's very interesting. I've been thinking about how to arrange these uh, in the in the palette to the right. Uh, and I think I came up with the perfect uh, idea because I organize them, and this is just a quick tip for you, in a way that the yellow won't be too close to any other highly contaminating, like blue especially. So the blue and the yellow there are quite separate. Uh, it's also next to the green, which is fine because green, you know, contains yellow, and also next to the red, which is good too. I also was able to, and here I'm just watering it down, a uh, very interesting kind of middle of the road red, it's, I think, could be perceived in some um, contexts as a cool red and in some as a, as a warm red, but um, highly transparent, I think. One thing I do not know, I'm not sure about, and I may check later on, is what this means. There are some squares with a stripe in the middle and then some that are like that. So I think this is the transparent one with the stripe and then the ones without it are semi-opaque probably uh, because there's nothing that actually has a black or a dark um, triangle or square. Uh, which means they're probably all of these are transparent or at least semi-transparent. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is it for the red. Now let's move on to the next one. Sorry, I'm uh, kind of obstructing the, uh, the view at some stages because I have to water it a bit of an awkward position. Uh, next up is the ultramarine blue. Let's move on to that. And uh, right off the gate, I can feel like this, uh, I, f I can feel how, I think this is a fairly light one and it will take a lot of effort to produce a dark value. So that could be a really good thing depending on what you're looking for. Um, or a bad thing if you want things to get really dark. So look, I'm really, uh, let me show you actually, I'm really digging into the palette. This is sometimes how you have to do it if you want to get a dark value. Uh, and still, you see it's not that dark. So just something to note. Uh, if you want to work highly light and transparent, this could be perfect for you. Uh, and I also think that with uh, the right mixture, 
this will be able to get, become quite dark, I think even with this red. Uh, we're going to try out some other mixes later on. Okay, uh, let's move on to some of the other colors. So we have here the Nickel Azo Yellow. This is the one I'm curious about. And the Nickel Azos tend to have almost a bit of a green feeling to them. Uh, so let's see how this one stacks up against some of the other Nickel Azo Yellows. So you see it's quite uh, a green yellow. If I take it as in its purest form, let me move this a bit here. You see it, it is a, a yellow yellow, so to speak, but it has quite a bit of green in it. And I did clean the brush well from the blue, so I don't think it's that. And uh, let, me, let me just kind of water it down around the bottom. I can add more water if I really want to lighten it up like that. Uh, let's try to grab just a bit more of that, but this is really an interesting looking pen. Um, <clears throat> I haven't seen many of the nickel azos that go this dark. Daniel Smith's one is also quite dark in the tube, but I don't know, not as much. Uh, next up is the one we've all been waiting for, the Mummy Transparent Red. Uh, and that's actually an, an interesting name that uh, could be accurate, because yes, you do see these kinds of um, brown reds on mommy's older cloth uh, gets that acquires that uh, I guess red quality to it um, and this one also takes some effort to to get uh, to be dark I think these could I, I didn't plan it out but these are gonna be perfect for the demo that's gonna come right after uh, this so I think you'll enjoy it. I think it's going to be a perfect way of showing these because it won't require too dark of a value. And of course you can glaze and it will get darker. It does look quite dark in the pan, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Now I'm not, as some of you know, a huge expert in pigments and in different types of paint. I did learn a bit uh, just for the context of painting uh, and some YouTube videos, but I'm not too big on nerding out. Uh, I'm more about if I like how the paint looks and I'm more about the temperatures too. So uh, I, I'm, if you have any insights you want to add about the pigments or anything like that, feel free to uh, drop a comment. That's, that really helps. Uh, many people um, use those to learn more. So now I'm going to get the, the olive green light. Uh, and I tend to love, yeah, I love this one. I tend to love the more olive uh, neutralized greens. I don't like marker or unnatural greens as much. They do have their place though. Uh, and in the right balance, they can look fantastic. Uh, for me, I'm a big fan of more muted colors and then controlling the, the viewer's focus with the punchy stronger ones. Um, but I feel like when you use too many of these super light and vibrant colors, it ends up missing the mark and looking too like this. If I just use these like that, very saturated too, uh, it may be a problem for a scene. It will work well for the exercise I'm going to show you in just a moment. Uh, and now the last one, Mineral Violet, and that seems to, and I think it's written on the uh, box itself that it's uh, a, hmm, where, where does it say that? Uh, it says somewhere that it's an earth pigment, if I'm not mistaken, and you can, if you look at the, you see here, it, it's a bit hard to, to see probably in, with the camera, but it does have a surface that kind of hints at it being, you know, jagged and, I don't know, more raw, more like the Primatech, and I have no idea like how he makes these exactly, but it kind of reminds me of the, the feel, at least, of the Primatech series. Um, and sometimes these paints produce unequal results in a good way, that's something that people like and seek uh, all sorts of earthy pigments that show. And I think I am, I hopefully I'm not confusing it. Uh, where did I see that it, said, it says an earthy tone? I may be confusing them, some of them. Uh, I don't know, maybe it was a different one. Maybe it was the mommy transparent, maybe it was uh, the green, I don't know. But in any case, this, this is a nice um, violet, very dark. I'm gonna use these for, um, for a lot of the studies I make probably. Let me zoom out a bit and give you a view of everything together. So this is what these look like. Uh, here are the paints once again up close in the palette. So what I'm going to do now is just create a few quick sketches and we're going to do a fun exercise. I think you'll enjoy this one. It will show how these mix. So here's what I've got and this is an interesting exercise I do once in a while and I've also shown it to you in the William B. Uh, Skip Lawrence's book on uh, painting light and shadow. I just take a couple of painting references and I turn them into two values, basically light and dark. Uh, and this isn't really a how to draw video, so I'm not gonna go too much in, in 
depth on how I uh, do the drawing and everything. I just want you to conceptually see this and hopefully you'll enjoy it and you can follow along with me. I've also shown this to you on how to, on the people and temperature video. Uh, so I'm just dividing it into uh, dark and light. Uh, and I'm trying to create some kind of a color variation. And my colors aren't necessarily, the, the light and shadow isn't necessarily as accurate. Um, let me zoom in a bit. Um, but uh, even if it's not fully accurate, the goal here is to go for uh, a, a look that's somewhat believable, okay? And, and to create and give the character some kind of a definition or the scene uh, just by using uh, two values. So I'm just start, or, or, you know, it doesn't have to be necessarily two values, but kind of a light and a dark area. So this entire vest is gonna be darker, so I'm just gonna darken it up. And notice how I'm transitioning from the yellow to the red. Uh, there is hmm, a bit of a shadow under the cheek here and under the, um, uh, what do you call it? Like the chin <laughs> and then a bit of a shadow under the head itself. And I'm just making my way around. The vest is again dark in its entirety, which will make the hand look a little, um, a little more um, like a white sleeve kind of thing. Uh, I can dark the shirt just a bit, make the red a little more vibrant and strong. And then I'm gonna start working my way into the sleeve and just indicating some shadows, okay? This is a lot of kind of interpretive work uh, that I did when planning out the sketch and, and drawing it. I will make another video on the topic, I promise. Uh, I already did a couple of them, so yeah. So this is the first, let's use a bit of a warmer uh, palette for this uh, person. Uh, let's even mix these. Uh, and for the next one, we'll use a bit of a uh, cooler palette. I did, I got a nice collage in. So you get two people, uh, one sitting at a bench, resting. Uh, the other one is working as a chef. Uh, and I'm just trying to connect as many shapes as I can, especially with this guy here. Uh, let's add a shadow under the hand. Now the, the, the pants are very dark. And you know what, let's go with a bit of blue there. So uh, a bit of blue for everything that's fully uh, dark right off from uh, this point and downwards, and I really have to work hard to produce a dark value here. Uh, so that's, again, something to have in mind when using this uh, particular ultramarine. Um, let's try and get some pure color, so a bit more of a clean blue, perhaps around this side of the pants, going around this, or trousers, I don't know what you'd call these if you want to be <laughs> Accurate, let's leave the socks white, so kind of like that, uh, like this, and this side as well, and hopefully that creates a nice little shape, but we are not done yet. First off, we have a couple of shadows on the bench, but I'm not gonna go into too many details here. The reason we're not done is that there's a background, and this background is gonna really uh, make this look nice. Now, here's a good opportunity to test the blue and red together, see how dark they get. So let's just plop that uh, window in here in the background that I strategically placed <laughs> behind his hat. It's actually there in the reference too, so I can't take too much credit for it, but um, I don't know, I knew it will look good. So here we go. A bit of a dark and light layer together. Uh, let's add a bit of a lighter value here, but still keeping it towards the medium to dark value just to contrast with some of the face and I do want to contrast with uh, the chin and the collar of the shirt and the sleeve here so what we essentially get is a once again a approximately two values sketch that looks really good if you want to add more details to it you could just by adding a couple of uh, lines and, and different differentiations here and there so you could do this kind of a thing just to add a bit of a line here, a bit of the folds and, and the cloth. Um, you could do quite a lot. I actually don't want to go into too many details here, so we'll we'll stop this one here. And now let's move on to the other guy. I'm gonna open the picture on my computer. Uh, I, and this one will go with a bit of a different color scheme, so a bit more, let's even, let's go very loose on how we interpret uh, the colors here. So I'm gonna start with a bit of red and green, actually, so let's mix those two together. See what happens, it's the olive green and the red. Uh, just a part of each, really. And here there's a shadowy area under the, the eye sockets, uh, around the nose. Let's darken this whole thing up. And uh, this is really hit or miss. You won't know exactly 
uh, how good of a result you got. You just have to kind of go for it and uh, hope it connects. And here the goal again is not to produce anything perfect really, it's just to kind of enjoy ourselves and, and enjoy the process of creating like this. So let's go over the, um, onto the apron. Uh, I'm gonna put a bit of green to start with, but then we're gonna push it into some of the uh, violet, uh, purpley violet, and just darken this thing up. Hopefully that m starts to make sense. Uh, again, it's not meant to be a perfect thing, but rather a quick study that shows you what the paints work like. And I think this is a, actually a beautiful color scheme. It's, it's kind of a, a secondary color scheme. So you get this is a lot of red and I hope you can see this. Let me tilt it a bit. Maybe you'll see it in the light. Hopefully you can see this well. It's a bit of a warm for the face, then cool for the apron. A very classic way of doing this. Um, now here there's a table where they're setting things up, plating the dishes perhaps. Uh, and from here on out, I'm just gonna stretch a couple of these red and maybe mommy <laughs> uh, kind of folds in the cloth. Um, these tend to be warm, like uh, white and its shadowy shape many times will be, uh, not warm, blue, sorry. Uh, but I'm, I don't know, I'm fine with this. So a couple of uh, folds in the cloth. Let's add a bit of blue to it just to see what happens. A bit of light blue perhaps and maybe even allow some of it to mix and neutralize some of these shadows I put in. So you see it's a, it's a lovely way of connecting warm and cool here as well. A couple of folds, creases, there's a bit of a shadow here. Um, and then I think we'll move on to the hand. So I'm just going back into the warm well I have here, just a bit of a warm area on the palette. I don't mix my colors perfectly separate. It's a warm area, a cool area, that's how I usually roll um, and let's add some color to the hands they're a bit darker than the uh, the rest especially more darker than his shirt so that's something you do want to uh, bring out and uh, let's stretch the dark area here just a bit add a bit of shadows on the table now here's again where the magic happens so let's contrast it with a background that's a bit cooler let's go with a bit of blue and purple and I'm just gonna work my way around it. This background will uh, give the face and the white of the shirt a bit more meaning. You see, like that. Just brings out the figure a little better. Let's go with a bit of pure blue here. And you see there's a nice little harmony. This background is dark as well, which will better indicate the sleeve. Um, and I think that works out. That's a nice little uh, thing. Let's let's go a bit dark here between the fingers because this is actually the background, uh, and this is how his hand looks. Has the finger here. Let's cut through this. This is a some kind of a container, um, and I think with that we're done. We could just to make the cloth the the shirt a little wider we could darken this area. Let me show you what I mean. Right now, these two are white, but as soon as I'll add a bit of value to his head, it will put the shirt in a bit of a better context, so to speak, make it look a little wider. See, uh, hopefully that works out. Again, nothing perfect, just a quick study to show you what these paints look like. And I barely even talked about how they feel, so I actually really enjoy them. We're gonna talk about it when I wrap it up face to face. Let me zoom out a bit. And here you can see the full uh, end result, and now we're gonna wrap it up face to face. I really enjoyed these. These are fun, they're, they're soft, they are easy to reawaken, uh, even though it's pans and not tubes. Uh, and overall, I really enjoy them. Now let's wrap it up. So here's the final result of experimenting with these paints. And I have to say, first, I want to thank you uh, for sending me these. I really appreciate it. And it's been a pleasure to try out. Uh, and here's the palette. I just want to say, these feel really high quality. So of the brands that I tried so far, I could basically divide it into two categories. Uh, the ones that feel like good quality artist professional grade, and the ones that are of lesser quality and student grade, which is great. It's a cheaper option for many. Uh, these definitely fit the first category, the high quality, 
um, um, professional type of grade of watercolor, strong pigmentation, very saturated, very nice, easy to re-wet, easy to reawaken, and I would definitely give these a try if you're still looking for the brand um, that you uh, that you want to stick to, and definitely if you can get those uh, locally, or locally or easily, I would definitely give these a try. I want to thank you once again uh, for sending me these, and I want to thank you, the viewer, for watching this video. I'm going to put down there information and links to everything, so definitely check it out. Thank you once again, and I will see you in the next vid.